Hey guys, Darius here. Um, today I figured I'd create kind of like a um, freeform opinion piece because I realized that it takes a while to make uh, uh, my, my new videos and primarily that's because there's a lot of information and research that goes into each one and I try to add historical context to a lot of the things that Mike talks about in the comics the way he adds historical context himself so I try to mimic his his um his style when it comes to just giving you information giving you the comic information but then also giving you the historical context to that comic information and um I feel like that just you know it just elevates the material a lot more and it also just elevates everyone's knowledge of random obscure weird paranormal facts or even random or even random historical facts because you know i feel like if you're into hellboy you're into that type of stuff anyway <laughs> um deep down we all want to be globe trotting paranormal investigators <laughs> trying to uh save the world or something like that i don't know uh, maybe it's just me <laughs> uh, but yeah so today i figured i'd i'd make a very long overdue video which is pretty much my thoughts on the 2004 Hellboys movie I'm not going to talk about the Golden Army I'm not going to touch the other one the one where they just didn't even try I'm not going to touch that one no offense to the people who worked in that film I'm pretty sure you worked hard but anyway we're going to talk about the 2004 Hellboy film we're going to go over the negatives or the positives and negatives, my experience with it. Um, once again, everything I say is just my opinion. If you love this film, if it meant, means a lot to you, then the way it means a lot to me, because it, even as much as I recognize its major flaws, it still means a lot to me. Because the Hellboy film really just, if you really think about it, it is crazy that this movie got made. It is insane that a movie like this about a demon who is put on Earth or who comes to Earth accidentally or, you know, not accidentally, you know, from Rasputin's uh, logic <laughs> um, to protect the world and is raised by a man and the man instills in him moral values and, and treats him like a person, you know, and in the, the message of your circumstances where you're born where you're from do not determine your future and who you are as a person i think that rings true throughout generations you know and this film does that in spades it hammers home those messages in spades it takes people in situations and just these especially the three of them um abe hellboy and uh liz people who are a if, who at first glance may seem like a danger are now the ones who are you know protectors and I guess we can start with the positives it's, the cinematography for this film is gorgeous like this is a gorgeous beautiful film Hellboy Del Toro knew what that man knew what he was doing <laughs> like he was like hey we need to we need to adapt these comic panels we need to make we need to make this look like what it would look like in real life we need to make sure these shadows are correct we need to make sure these symbols are correct we need to make sure it's raining this cold damp raining feel with this this very nice october feel kind of vibe that mignola puts in his in, in his panels we need that all the time and it's crazy because when i saw this movie it was literally dark cold and raining like when my mom took me to see this as a kid back in 04 i was i was the mood was right seeing this movie especially waiting for the movie to start i'm like just staring at the hellboy poster waiting for it to start like and as if you're if you're a kid and, you, and you're into the dark fantasy stuff you know that means that back then you were growing we were growing up on uh stuff like sleepy hollow and witchblade and uh and spawn so it was like Hellboy was just that next step, you know. Here's a character who is not brooding. He's not, you know, he's not a brooder. Because Hellboy doesn't brood. I mean, unless he's sad, he'll brood. I mean, everyone does. <laughs> but 
you know he's just he he's the opposite of everything he's the opposite of his physical form you know his his personality is the opposite of his physical form and del toro del toro did that in spades you know um very a colorful cast of characters great villains in Rasputin Cronin and I keep forgetting Rasputin's love interest name but I think it's because she is my least favorite character just period I don't like her <laughs> I just don't um it's not that she's useless it's just that she doesn't do anything outside even 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 in the BP even moving forward she literally just ser- move, she moves to serve him and I'm just like all right all right do you um go ahead go off whatever uh but um the actress that played her did it well um but yeah i really love like i said the score for this film is is way is great the the uh i can't talk today the um the cinematography is beautiful um it is as a standalone film without context to the source material it's great and it's ahead of its time like you have to i mean to understand that okay to be someone in hollywood to be a producer and say i'm going to take a risk on a film that is about in from my perspective if i'm somebody who doesn't read hellboy or if i'm somebody who doesn't know what hellboy is about he might as well be the son of satan or he might as well be satan himself he's none of those things because satan is a completely separate character in hellboy because they actually go over the tears to hell and the, the the different um parts of pandemonium that different people run um or different you know high duke demons run you know but at first glance to someone to a mom or to the uninitiated or whatever this is like some weird demonic stuff that i'm not showing my kid thank goodness my mom was the type that one day when i was like hey we got why do we have it on vhs we like they were i remember this is right this is a sad story but it 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 comes together (laughs) my mom and my dad bought it on vhs and when it was when the reboot was coming out they they kept asking questions and i was like y'all yeah, bought it on vhs how do you not know how the story goes and she was like we bought it for you and i was like you bought a child this <laughs> you thought i was but i mean i loved it so i mean they knew that I, I i was into this weird shit so they didn't care like you know i mean if you grew when you grew up with pumpkin head and freaking uh friday the 13th movies and like i said and stuff like sleepy hollow and freaking uh uh dark city and and shit and you're gonna and stuff i'm sorry youtube you're gonna um you, you're just gonna be numb to a lot of weird stuff going forward but hellboy was the first film or the first my, my first experience of dark fantasy done in a way that was still very much like there's there was a heart there's a warmth and a heroism to it you know um and yeah and the film because of that succeeded in spades the negatives though are that and i'm only going to be talking about hellboy liz abe and cronin for for this video and i'll start with liz that ain't liz sherman to it i I will say right that that like personality wise yeah that's liz chip on the shoulder wise i killed my i i i I leveled a silly block like two city blocks because someone so because it's because someone pissed me off because these little boys keep playing with me yeah that's liz but i'm in love with hellboy nah that's incest (laughs) because liz sees him like a brother so as someone who got into the film and then started getting into other stuff so i started reading the novels i started reading the the comics i got so into it that the term ignorance is bliss really reared its ugly head because it's like man this stuff is not accurate and i fell in love with what mike was doing with her character throughout the comics and i was like why is she so limited in this in this film series she's now you oh you, you just put babies in her now right she, she she can't do nothing else now right it's all about you now right 
when in the comics and i know the comics are the comics and movies are the movies but in the comics the three of them serve a very important role and i won't spoil the for people who don't you know who haven't read or who don't read or who haven't read bprd i encourage you to if you want to know how this all ends read bprd from start to finish um but it's just the way she's handled in this film i remember when i was watching the making of this movie like mike would talk about how they would just and this has happened and i don't understand why this happens to him where these directors and these this hollywood would just take these these shots at him at his decisions in his book so they were like so del toro came to him and he was like hey well liz is two-dimensional so she's not interesting so we need to make her interesting so we're going to make her a love interest and change that and this and that or whatever and i'm like liz isn't interesting liz is literally a woman who has the power of a god and she hates it i think that's extremely interesting this is something that she doesn't want but she can't live literally she can't live without it she can't live without a power she does not want it is pain to her and i just feel like that was something that was just lost and yes she controls it and yes she gets it but the way that happens and it's just very much she just closes her eyes now and now she now she she can master it now she can control it when it was like nah like liz had to go to therapy (laughs) liz had to freaking go to a mountain and train with monks (laughs) because she was so messed up in the head that she just could not it she didn't understand why she had this power and it wasn't really it did i mean there was a point in time in the books where she lost it because emotion it was kind of like a spider-man moment where she just lost her power because she wasn't feeling it and she became even more depressed because now she's useless she felt useless without it what can i do for my bprd partners and my and, and abe how, how helpful am i to people now that i don't have my powers anymore so when i see how she's portrayed in this film as just the love interest for the damsel to one degree or another it's like nah i just i stopped for i was looking at like i can't can't get behind this anymore like i just can't like nah bro like nah no no and no (laughs) like i just can't it's not but it's at the same time i'm not saying that to hate on this film i'm saying that to say i i see the flaws and i still think this is a great movie you know um because she could have been so much she could have been such a refreshing character if they didn't do what they did to her in these in these films especially in this film where she's just there to be rescued and i mean she her power she can't control her powers she's a she's a she's a she's a ticking time bomb of destruction sometimes and she's just trying to get away from everything which all of that is to one degree or another true but it's she's trying to get away from herself not the bprd not the not the world you know she's really just trying to get away from herself um and for del toro to come to mike and say that i mike i'm pretty sure mike had to feel some type of way about del toro saying that to him to the point where i remember even mike saying hey you make your movie i'll write my comic and we'll we'll leave it at that you know and i think that was his way of saying stop tampering and interfering you're already changing stuff that i would never have done so stop it you know um so yeah but i still love the actress that plays liz i think she looks like her um her hair isn't red which i thought was i mean but that's little tiny stuff that really is it, it's neither here or there but still uh with abe and i'll save hellboy bef- I'll, I'll save hellboy for last um and also what we talk about the bprd uh organization as a whole as well because i got some sh- um abe and cronin and i'm this is a two-in-one <laughs> abe and cronin i've noticed are literally switched he switched the del toro switched abe and cronin he made Abe the meek, intellectual one, and Cronin the one that that carries this that the strap on him and is ready to freaking bust everybody in the head and keep it moving and then ask questions. Like, I didn't understand why that was why that had to happen. And I, I, my theory is that 
they didn't want to take they didn't want one freak they didn't want multiple freaks being cool and badass they needed that one freak. they needed hellboy it's it, he's the title character you know so they needed that and i think that with abe it was just like well, all right let's make him this meek character that supplies hellboy with the information that he needs you know he, he'll be in a sense his kind of his alfred to his batman or whatever where he's the one supplying or he'll he'll supply him with stuff or he'll he'll tell him about stuff or you know he'll look up stuff or he'll, he'll give him stuff and it's like hellboy is extremely smart and for some reason these films do not they don't talk about that enough he's not worried about the being on the outside oh i will get to that let me stop well i'm going ahead. i'm getting ahead of myself <laughs> um woo. uh so yeah with abe abe is like the type of he abe is literally like i like to describe him as a 1950s hard-boiled detective kind of dude that's how i've always seen him where he's just like, what's the case? What do we gotta do? Let me do some detective work. Let me get in there and see what's going on. And then, and at the same time, hey, don't cross me because I will, I, I'm not, I ain't punching you. I'ma just shoot you. <laughs> like Abe is literally like, hey, I ain't gonna punch you. I'm, if I got a spear, I'ma stab you. And if I got a gun, I'ma just shoot you. I ain't about, I ain't about, all right, if you're trying to fight, okay, we can go. Like, it's as simple as that and that's what i love about abe so much like he knows that he's not as powerful as hellboy he's not as capable as hellboy but he still puts in that 110 percent every single case and i just felt like that was just something once again that del toro changed i felt like why why'd you need to change that and hollywood has this egotistical creativity where the term if it ain't broke don't fix it doesn't apply they think it's all broke and they need to fix it because they got to put their creative stamp on it and with cronin cronin turned into this assassin which granted the lore behind his body the visual lore behind what cronin became in this film is great i love it um it's just that that's the one change i feel like sure why not you know because in the in the book i don't like his character in the book in the, in the movie sure but maybe have him actually be that smart scientist dude that he is and still be that cold-blooded killer that he is what is so wrong with having a scientist being or having a smart person also being somebody that can beat the crap out of you i don't get why that's a bad thing but i've noticed that a lot of movies don't like doing that um sherlock does it the, the sherlock holmes robert Downey jr movies do that greatly do that well though i love them for that um but intelligence does not equal less brawn you know and i just think that um the way he made cronin very alien very strange was another liberty that i feel like even though it was something that was inaccurate so it's kind of i guess i kind of counted as a as a as a false positive it wasn't accurate but hey it's still it was dope like hey like he was a beast like that man had drip <laughs> and i know I, it's strange to say but when he first showed up if you were a child and you first saw cronin standing in the rain <laughs> in that all black looking like a beast like yo like that was it that was that dude was vicious like he was cool so especially if you were into that type of thing man man mm. That was a that was a time in the theater. Uh, so yeah, so with Hellboy, um, Hellboy is completely inaccurate. Visually, he's great, but his personality—that's not who he is. Hellboy is not the type of person who's gonna disrespect his father ever, As, unless he's a kid. He'll go off on his own. Like in the in the uh, Midnight Circus, yeah, he went off on his own. He escaped, but yeah, he's a child. He's supposed to do those things, you know. But in this film it just seems like they've probably they felt like we couldn't show hellboy as he is we have to make him quote unquote relatable and i just felt like you didn't have to do that you didn't have to make him be so reckless hellboy's not that reckless he's not reckless at all really 
when he starts his fights, he's somewhere where his fellow agents aren't getting hurt. He's not going to run off and leave his his people, his team. They rely on him. He's someone that that when El, when Hellboy, Abe, and Liz are around, the BPRD agents know that they're being protected. That they know that they're literally, as the poster says, here to protect. Your chances of survival have increased because Hellboy is here. And I just hated how they made him out to be someone who wanted to be human. He fouls his hair. He fouls his horns down to fit in to be human. He, people accept him for who he is. There are plenty of cowboy comics where he's shown up randomly to a house. And people go like, oh, hey, come in. Have some tea. Let's talk. That's the other thing. There's a lot of talking that Hellboy does. He doesn't... He fights, yeah. He always fights. But there is there is talking. There is understanding of the of these quote-unquote villains because these the the idea is that yes he's a monster and but and because of that he can communicate with the the quote-unquote monsters he can talk to them he can see what's going on before making the decision of throwing hands and i just feel like with this they turned him into a blunt objects a blunt object you know he's envious he can't be seen out in public yes he can he totally can it would not matter no one cares (laughs) like he's so friendly and so people are so friendly to him in the books until it's crazy like no one cares he can literally just show up if he shows up if someone's having a problem he shows up he's like hey i'm here to help they're like all right cool i didn't expect you to look at that but all right come in and that adds to the charm of of the universe that's all it does. He didn't have to be somebody who was afraid to go out or sneaks out. Why would he do that? He can go on his own if he wanted to. Hellboy can enjoy the sun. Hellboy can enjoy sitting at a park. Those are things that he would actually like doing. But none of these stuff is none of those these characteristics about him are expressed. And I just think that's a, that it was a shame because it shows layers to him, and they just ma- it just made him out to be a brat. I didn't like that. The professor, spot on. Bert, professor Burnholm is spot on casting forever, forever. Ian McShane, I love you, but no, never. I don't know what that was. That was like, that was like, ghetto drunk professor, abusive dad. I say I drop an f bomb every five minutes just to sound cool and attract the, the the new kids or whatever type thing. And I just thought that was weird. But I'm not here to talk about that movie. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and I guess my experience, knowing what I, I guess as someone who, I can't just watch a movie, you know, like I can't watch the first Predator movie and be okay. I got to watch all the sequels. I got to read the books. I got to read the comics. I got to collect the action figures because I don't ever want to leave that world, especially as a writer and as a storyteller. So I always want that inspiration to be around me. So I guess for people who, weren't into Hellboy and only watch the films and just love those films and see those films as gospel when they come up to me and they say certain things I just some stuff goes over my head like I remember I was in a drug test right and I was taking a drug test I know this is random but I was taking the drug test and I had my Hellboy comic with me and this lady this girl was just like oh wow you're in the Hellboy cool uh, I love how him and Liz are in a relationship and they're gonna have kids and blah 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 and the next one they're gonna have kids and I'm like first of all they ain't gonna be a next one second of all what are you talking about and then I realized oh yeah she's talking about when Del Toro said he was gonna make have them have kids and one is gonna be an angel the other's gonna be a devil and then the angel's gonna be evil and all this other random sh- stuff that I would never do um and I was like hey that's cool do you you know more power to you i ain't i ain't ain't tripping (laughs) you know i'm not it's it i love that people love this film i love this film but i there's just so many inaccuracies that i feel like did not need to happen and i think people get especially non-comic book fans feel like comic book fans are being elitist or they're being up in arms but it's like it's just that it's just the reality of the fact that we all just see through different lenses so you know and i'm somebody who came in for as an outsider who as a child of course because i wouldn't you know i mean there's not weren't a lot of comic book shops but i came in as an outsider you know and 
now I want to I wanted to learn more and I learned more and then I realized that hey this movie ain't it <laughs> some of this stuff ain't it Rasputin is accurate to a degree but not really you know um it's just uh, they really tried to adapt Seed of Destruction which is fine but that's not what I would have done first but maybe I'll make a video about what I would have done maybe I'll, I'll do that uh but yeah, I'm going to cut this because I don't want to keep going. Um, let me know in the comment section below what you guys thought of the 2004 Hellboy movie. Uh, I guess looking back on it, I know it's been a long time, but I mean, it's still, it's still, it still holds up, man. It's still a dope movie to watch. I still would recommend it. Um, with all of its faults, I still recommend it. Uh, even because they're just something that I've noticed as a comic book fan. They're not something that's law, you know? And yeah, especially people who read Hellboy, I'd love to know what you guys think too about just what this movie adds <laughs> um, and what the other movies add as well. Uh, my next video is, is something I'm working on right now, which will be Roger the Homunculus. So um, I'm almost finished with that. So I'll be um, releasing that one pretty soon. And look, be on the lookout because me and Santonius have a big announcement to make in regards to the future of the channel. And yeah, uh, that's it. I'm going to stop rambling. Uh, oh, one last thing. Um, one last little story. It's, 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 it's so random. But <laughs> one time I named myself Hellboy at a laser tag. And the guy was like, you can't do that. That's demonic. That's wrong. But then this other guy who worked there was like, and I was a kid, so I know I, I was I didn't know what I was I was just random. But this other guy who worked there was like, Oh no, wait, stop. You mean like the comic book hero? And I was like, Yeah And he was like, Yeah, man, you can keep it. And I remember that day in laser tag because I get super competitive in laser tag and I beat up I beat a lot of people. But yeah, that's it. Um yeah. Peace.